Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden, well, it's still a little wild. We're still getting it in control. But the good thing is, is I have a plan and I'm working on that plan and bit by bit, things are getting better and better. So today what I'm gonna be doing is, well, we've got a lot of beans to harvest. Like a lot, a lot. Green beans, dry beans, all sorts of beans. We need to get these Puerto Rican black beans off these trellises so I can get my tomatoes in the ground and actually get like my, my not summer vegetables going. Well, if you're excited to learn a little bit about what my experience has been with Puerto Rican black beans, or you just wanna hang out, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So here's one of my arch trellises, my cattle panel arch trellises, which you can see was very much covered all summer and has tons and tons of dry beans on it all over the place, ready to be harvested. On the other side, when I had done a harvest a little while ago, um, I threw some of the beans down there and they have already taken off and put out tons and tons of pods. But the thing is, is I don't know if these pods are really actually useful. We'll find out. I'll just try to eat some raw <laughs> and they'll taste good. They'll taste bad. Who knows? The big thing is, is that I just need to keep making progress against my plan, even if it's not ideal at this point, because we just need to get these beans off these trellises so that I can get tomatoes on them, which is really what should be happening right now. So where I'm going to start first is on the trellis where it's very obvious and easy to tell that this, this, this needs to happen. So let's go. Let's go. So I cannot believe how many black beans we are going to have to harvest. There is legitimately an insane amount on here. I have handy dandy pruners. I'm using pruners right now because if I use my hands, I feel like a lot of these pods would start breaking apart and then I will have beans everywhere. Not only will I have beans everywhere, I will have bean plants everywhere. <laughs> And there's already enough Puerto Rican black beans that already escaped happening in my garden. So I kind of want to minimize some of this. Oh my goodness. We may be here forever and ever. Oh, we yeah, even have some green ones. I've been seeing these flower and I know like our ideal season is more in the summertime. But I have been curious, have any of you guys tried these green before or as like little green babies? I'm curious, should we try one? Cause I do like young green beans. Oh, these are nice. They're really fibery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess if you got them a little bit smaller, a little bit greener, you wanna kind of, for comparison, if you've done this before, these aren't bad. Not as good as like when I do the, um, where they trail cheer, trail, trail of cheers. That's no trail of tears, uh, black Cherokee ones. I say I prefer those over these, but I mean, those are actually pretty nice. I love those compost. Not bad. Wouldn't say as good, but not bad. I really like these Puerto Rican, I really like these Puerto Rican black beans. We use a ton of black beans. We eat chili, oh my gosh, at least twice a month. We're big chili people. Bean chili, no meat in it. So having lots and lots of beans is important for us. And a lot of the bean varieties I've tried in the past, they do, they've done okay. I would say the best one I, uh, that isn't Puerto Rican black beans was the Trail Tears ones, the Cherokee black beans. But other than that, Every other bean I've done, meh. Okay. This one I like because it puts out tons of beans. Just so many, too many probably. <laughs> Just so many, too many is a lot. It's a lot to keep up with, but they're great because they definitely cover up the trellises in the summer when there's not a lot of stuff that, oh, other than Lufa, and Lufa's its own little fun thing. Honestly, those green beans, I'm not loving them enough that I think I would do anything with them. But you guys can tell me I'm wrong in the comments, you know. I always like hearing advice because trust me, I'm, I'm no doubt that we'll be growing more black beans. So maybe if I got them earlier, I've been kind of ignoring these trellises. Maybe you guys would have a different opinion on them. 
cannot believe how many there are. Oh, so if you're wondering how I'm collecting them, I just have like a giant empty box <laughs> throwing everything in. Because last time I tried to do a bowl, that was not a good choice because the bowls get full very quickly. We've done buckets too. Also get, you know, pretty full quickly. So I'm going with boxes this time. Last harvest, I used boxes a lot because I just sat in front of the TV. <laughs> do you do that? I just sat in front of the TV and I just, what would you call it, shucking? I shucked all of them. See, like, I don't know if these are gonna dry out. I'll throw them in there for right now, but I might separate them out later. Some of these, you can see like these ones technically should be left on the vine. They're starting to dry out, but they're still, you can see the green still with them. So they technically aren't ready. I'll throw them in the box. We'll see if they can finish drying. This pod, it's like perfect, right? This is what I look for. It's nice, it's dried out, it's got a nice tan color. It's not greenish. Maybe there's like a slight green tinge. You can maybe pick up right here, but this is overall, it feels dry to the skin. Versus, let me find one. I know there's a ton in here. Oh, this was too late. This has been molding on the line, but I still keep these ones because sometimes you open them up and the pods are completely, the beans themselves are actually completely fine. So, don't be too quick to judge. Oh, I see you falling down. Oh, 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 there you go. So don't be so quick to judge these. If you don't see it like broken open, sometimes you open them and it's like they're totally fine. Let's take a look. Oh, these are definitely moldy. Yeah, we can leave those on the ground. It's one of those nice days where it's like really, really nice to be out here and just sit here and like clip along. God, there's gonna be so many beans. I'm gonna get through like a lot of seasons of Real Housewives shucking these things. Though, I'm a big fan of hand, like pulling apart the pods. I've been seeing some stuff about like throwing it in a blender or feeding it with a bag. And then you blow the chaff off like a fan, which I don't have a fan. I mean, we could get a fan if we really needed to. But I don't know, I just like, it's very just like, I don't know, meditative. You just kind of sit there, peel them open. Also, I feel like you can find a pod and it's like, these are all good, but then like the ones that are right here are bad. And so unless you go back through all of your beans later before you store them, you might not pick up on the fact that some of them are bad. So like what I find is like this. Let's see if you guys can see this. So like you can see like there's regular bumps and then there'll be like this happening. And in here, I often find like maybe moldy or something funky going on. So just as I'm peeling them, I just chuck those for compost and don't put them in my pile of dried beans. Which brings me a question to you guys. How do you store your dried beans? If you're a dried bean person, or have you ever even tried doing dried beans before? See, like This might have gotten some mold, but we'll open it and we'll check it out. Oh my goodness. So many vines. Yeah, have you guys grown ble beans? <laughs> have you guys grown home beans before? And if you have, what varieties, like types? Not only like, is it a black bean or whatever type, but like if you, what is it? Oh, I think those were lacewing eggs. Ah. Yeah, there's lacewing eggs on here. Look at that, lacewing eggs. Ah, what to do? Those are like a happy little predator. We're just gonna have to scrape them off, I'm sorry. Actually, I'll throw this pod down here. I'll let it be. Yeah, what varieties of beans have you grown? Slash, have you ever grown beans? What's your favorite or not favorite? Sometimes it's good to share which ones have not worked for us because they just don't work. And that's good feedback too, because then we won't try it. Or we will try it, but we'll know Maybe it's not a me problem, it's just the variety for Florida. Wow, this is gonna be so many beans. Too many, ooh, here's like a smaller pod. Let's try this one. It's even smaller than the other one. Mm-hmm, that's a little sweeter. It's a nice garden snack. 
I can see canning that as a green bean. I don't know if it would can as a green bean. Has anyone canned these as green beans? That's nice. That one I like. I don't like the other one. That was good. This feels like it's just about ready to dry out. Throw it in the bin. Throw it in the box. Okay. When you have a trellis this big, because this thing is 12 feet long, because um, these were, let's see, how long were these? Each panel is like four feet, and there's three panels on here, so it's four, 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 and each of them 16 feet long. So basically, we've got like 16 feet coming up and over. Come on. 16 by 12 feet. That's basically how many much beans we've got on here. It's a lot. A lot, a lot. So one of the ways, because when there's like tomatoes and so much stuff on here, what I try to do is I'll come through and I kind of, because there's a nice grid pattern, and it'll kind of come through and just be like, okay, do I see anything? And that's how I catch stuff often that's underneath. So the nice thing is, is this is drying out right now. So I can see underneath a little bit better. Try to catch as much of this as possible. Because my intent is once I've gotten most of the beans off, is I'm going to take these vines and they're gonna go into the middle vegetable bed over here. I'll show you in a minute, or maybe 10 minutes. Who knows, depends how long this takes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove them all in there. They can break down, be nice nitrogen material. And then um, they'll just, they'll be in there. Because then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill that bed up. Well, we're gonna harvest sweet potatoes, take the sweet potatoes, vines, and also put them in there. And then that will get sweet potatoes restarted and it will, anger issues maybe, I don't know. You tell me. I don't know about that one. Feels like these green beans are hit or miss. So like I was saying, we'll take the vines, put them in the middle bed, throw some dirt on it. Then we'll put the sweet potato vines in. They'll restart taking off um, with the intent that I'm gonna do sweet potato harvest. Not today. Tomorrow. And then we'll finish filling up that bed. Let the sweet potatoes take over that bed. Have lots of nitrogen material in there. So we'll have like lots of uh, I don't know if that's really the best idea for uh, Mr. Sweet Potato. Let's go on the other side of the trellis where it's a little bit shadier. I think I started to ask you, can't remember, but are you guys, have you used the method of blenders, pillow sacks, bags, and stuff like that? Or do you just like hand shuck everything like me? And if you've done it multiple ways, question, what did you like more? What was your preference at the end of it? I can't believe this plant's still going. I probably should have pulled these off in August. It would have been better. Um, but you know what? Honestly, when it got a slightly cooler and the sun intensity started dropping, this thing started to take off again. It started blooming like crazy, which is why I have lots of nice fresh pods. I probably should have gotten a lot of this off then. I think we had the hurricane, right? That was in August. So I did not prioritize. Woof! Leaf's attacking me. I didn't prioritize getting this done because, you know, as always when hurricanes are coming, it's like you pick your poison, you pick your battles that you need to fight. And in the scheme of things, saving $10, $20 worth of beans is not a priority. <laughs> like, let's be real. Like that's not gonna be the thing. That's gonna be the needle mover. So, and honestly, if we didn't have water and food for a minute, like they would have still been okay on the vine. So we could have just pulled them as needed if there really was like a crisis. So that's always the thing about, I feel like sometimes people prioritize stuff and then it's like when you, if you don't take a step back in it, then all of a sudden it's like, was that really the priority? It's like, I like to put a lot of thought process against what are my priorities? What is important to me? What's gonna really move the needle? I even do that with varieties of plants. I've simplified trying certain varieties just because I'm like, I'm putting a lot of effort and space into things that aren't known to help me. And if I don't know that they're gonna help me, then maybe they're not such a, a good idea. You know? So I, what I did is I kind of reduced the percent that I experiment. Now that I kind of have some successes with certain plants, so I 
put, let's say like 75% to 90% to known varieties, and then just a much smaller percentage to trying stuff out because yeah, got seminal pumpkins, no seminal pumpkins are gonna work. No, those sweet potatoes are gonna work. I don't have to try new varieties. And I think that's something for yourself too. Like you start off, everything's kind of an experiment. You know, you use people like me and others experience to help kind of give you a head start. But then as you figure out what works in your garden, your space, your lifestyle, your gardening practices, you know, stick to those. There's of course natural variety in nature, but you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every year. Unless you want to. Then go for it. Alright. Let's 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 uh I'm gonna do a little montage, a little uh black bean montage. Alright, let's do that. And if you have any green pods, I just like them, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm dropping them right up against the trellis so they do sprout again in one area, not everywhere. These vines have been running crazy again. This is why I want to, in the new design, not have vines everywhere because especially the pumpkin and the potato, not the potato, the, uh, what are these? Beans? Like I can see right here, there's tons of dried ones that have already like dropped and like fallen on the ground and apparently are gonna start reseeding. And that is gonna create a mess for later on. But if I get this area all cleaned up and we just do pumpkins over there, like we've talked about in the design, then it'll make it way more obvious when Puerto Rican black beans start to try to jump up and yeah, I can hear cracking, but I don't know if those pods are uh, there's also like pumpkin fruit I can see down. So Ben was nice enough to come out and help me. Hey Ben. Hello. I don't know if you can see them, but he's here. Even if it's just Hello. some spirit on the camera. Oh my gosh. So, and then we're putting all the vines that, um, if you start pulling vines at any point, Ben, I'm putting them in that metal bed. This one? No, that metal one back there. Oh, I see. Because that's the one that has the most drop on it. So I have to sacrifice some pumpkin fruit too. Also okay, because we have so many pumpkins in the house. So it's better that I get this under control over getting a perfect pumpkin harvest. Oh my gosh, this vine runs all the way to the other trellis. Jeez. Here, can you clip it? It actually started over here and then ran up that trellis. This is the problem with having vines right. everywhere. Like clip it clip? on over by, you see where that pumpkin is? Like right here? Yeah, just clip it. I don't know how many beans we want to harvest at this point. Oh, was that where it was in the ground? Maybe. Part of me is like, how many, how many beans do we need? Oh shoot, I totally missed. Um, I don't know. 
is gonna be like a full box. Easy. And this thing has been flowering like crazy, which the bees have loved. But now we got more native plants in, so the bees can love other things. Pulling all the beans to me instead of me finding the beans. I feel like only going after the good pods at this point because there are so many pods on it. Like there's, so, there's so many pods. Gosh. I've let this vine go too crazy for the sake of harvest. And you know what? Bad choices. Because now it's in the native bed. And this is where we gotta just say what's going where? Who gets to do what? Honestly, Puerto Rican black beans, you get to be on the trellis, but no more, not through the winter time. It's crazy. All right. And I don't know that I want a whole nother box full. You know? What do you think, Ben? Do you want a whole box full? No. Huh? No. Oh, there's a bumblebee. Oh my gosh, there's a bumblebee right by Ben, and he's not freaking out. Look at how much you've grown. Look how far I've come. Like he used to like freak out. He'd be like, oh, oh, oh. oh ow. <laughs> the vine's like, stop making fun of your husband. Yeah, I'm sticking to more of the pods that look like nice. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did I almost attack you? I'm looking, yes. I'm doing the nice ones. You know, anything with mold. You all saw it. She assaulted me. <laughs> this is a common gardening affair. No, don't end up in the box. We're not harvesting you, Puerto Rican leaf. Okay. Put this in the so now it is the time like let's just get it off of here because I mean like how much more do I need like I've got a whole box full you know we still have a bunch of dry bla uh, not black beans we still have a ton of dry Puerto Rican black beans left so what am I gonna do with like I'm just gonna end up with more and more so kind of where I'm at about like pumpkins too right now it's like I'm not too worried if I mess some up because I need to draw down the inventory of what I currently have before I need to worry about production of current crops. We're doing too good, too good. All right, let's start ripping all this out and shoving it in the other bed. See, here's the challenge. Like you can pull on a vine, but it's just like nothing comes off easily. It's all just wound around. Ugh. But we'll get it little by little. Just try to pull stuff out. Ugh. Oh. We'll get it. I got a huge pile of vines. <laughs> Here's our progress so far. There's my giant pile. You can always tell which side's Ben versus me because look how methodically he's cleaned off this side. <laughs> Everything from this section's done. And he's making his way down. And that's his pile. So while I've gotten more done, it's not in a very systematic way. It's just, ah! And he's always like, panel by panel by panel. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I think this is why we work well together. Because I got a lot of junk off the top that he doesn't have to deal with. And if you were wondering, Jacqueline, you don't seem to be fussing with composting a lot. It seems like it might be easy. If you want to know way more about the way I compost, because as someone who worked an insane amount of hours, 
didn't have time for high fussy maintenance techniques you can check it out i'll put this video at the end and you can see how i compost and how good it is at even bringing down an entire turkey carcass it's that easy so yeah we'll continue cleaning this stuff up So Ben is wrapping up a lot of what we did and now we've got all these to shuck. You know, I'm really excited for this harvest because, you know, it's always good to have preserved beans. I'm learning from um, a new friend I made. Her name is um, Amy Cross. You might wanna check her out um, because she does a lot of stuff about preserving food, but not like the way we usually talk about with preserving food. And what I mean is, is that a lot of times we talk about preserving food, we think about long-term, but she's all about like, how do you, whether you buy it from the store or it comes out of your garden, like how do you make it last in your fridge as long as possible? Um, so I was watching some of her videos about like how to make berries last, cause we're big berry fans. And I was like, oh man. And then I was talking to her the other day and I was like, would this work on mulberries too? And she's like, yeah. So I'm really excited. Cause, and it got me thinking about some of these beans that might be a little bit on the questionable side. Like if I did, I'm gonna go through her videos and see. And then if I can't find anything, I'll just bug her <laughs> and ask her some questions. But she's a really cool lady. I'll link her channel down below, Amy Cross. Um, but about like taking food fresh and then just preserving how long it lasts fresh. So she can get like strawberries from going bad in a week from the store to now all of a sudden they last a month in her fridge. So I was like, well, what happens when you grow strawberries? Like how long will they last in your fridge? So that's really exciting. So I wanted to see if maybe that could be used. Some of those techniques could be used to like kind of turn the corner on some of these beans that are might not be quite as ideal. Maybe we could get them to last a bit longer, but maybe not, I don't know. But of course, if you guys know stuff, would love to hear your techniques. My parents are here, so we kind of have to wrap up. But we got everything harvested off the Eastern trellis. We got everything harvested off the Western trellis, or at least whatever we're gonna. And we've gotten the Western trellis all cleared off. So that means, oh, check, check, check. Let me go grab my planner so I can make sure I keep myself on track. Cause that's how I am keeping myself doing a really good job. So there it is. Let's check it off. Puerto Rican black bean harvest is done, which means next up we get to do sweet potato harvest. Um, cause there's definitely some sweet potatoes in there. How many? I don't know, but there's at least two. <laughs> I saw at least two the other day. So we're going to flip that over. And then once we I'll explain a little bit more, but basically we'll harvest, we'll take all the vines, we'll let them reroot in the new bed that we're gonna let the new old bed, we'll top it off with soil, we'll get these beds topped off, we'll finish clearing this next time, and then we can plant out all the rest of those fall starts, and then just work it on, <laughs> focus, that's a new word, that's focus and work combined together. And then we can focus on you know, keep it moving forward and I can continue to tidy up and get this place back looking really lovely. What do you think of the sweet goldenrod? Is that not looking gorgeous? Bees love it. Yes. I've been making lots of notes, lots of notes getting ready. So Puerto Rican black beans, it's done. Harvest is complete. Good enough for now. We're just going to keep getting better every year, huh? And if you want to go ahead and learn more about how I do really simple, easy composting, go ahead and check out this video right here. Trust me when I say, it is one of the most, or if not the most low maintenance way to compost, especially down here in a subtropical climate. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.